for our next vehicle, we're going to look at a 2008 Infiniti G35. Many times you'll get an Infiniti or a Nissan that comes in and the idle is very rough. I'm going to show you how to do idle air volume relearn and I'm going to show you how to do the test as well as how to look up information on how to do the test. There's some very specific things you must do to the vehicle prior to actually setting up and doing the relearn. So first, let's go and let's get our repair information from Identifix. So I'm going to tap on diagnostic information. I'll tap on direct hit. We're going to go directly out to Identifix website right now. And in a moment, I'll go ahead and in the search box, I'll type out what I'm looking for. I'm going to tap on my search box. I'll then tap on my keyboard. And I'm going to type in the words idle air volume relearn. And I'll close out my keyboard. I'll tap on the search box. Up will come my available repair information. You'll see everything from a technical service bulletin to a hotline archive, as well as many other additional bits of information. And we're going to go out to the actual piece that I need, which is my operation. So I'm going to go to description and operation. And you'll notice that I've got general descriptions right there. If you'll see, it says accelerator pedal release position learning. So I'm going to tap on it. It'll load it for me, so I'll have the exact set of instructions. Now, like I said, there's a lot of things you have to prepare with this vehicle, so you really need to learn the instructions or read them very carefully, because it's going to tell you everything you need to know. For example, you must make sure the engine's at operating temperature of around 210 degrees Fahrenheit, and you must make sure that all my accessories are turned off, that the steering wheel is perfectly straight ahead, that my emergency brake is applied, and that every single electric load accessory is turned off. That's A, C heated seats, um, uh, rear defroster, any of those items, including and not excluding my actual standard dashboard where it tells you the, everything you need to know about the vehicle, stereo and everything. So I'm going to look through the instructions. There's all that I need right there. I'm at idle air volume. It tells you all the preconditioning. And then it tells you what to do with your scan tool. So I'm going to close out. We'll go ahead and move on and actually perform the test. But before I do that, I'm going to go to data stream. We're going to see what our engine operating temperature is, make sure we're there, and then I'll go check the other things on the vehicle. So we see that my engine operating temperature is at 204 degrees. We're OK. So let's close out data stream and get ready to see what else we've got to do. Remember, I told you, you must make sure the steering wheel is perfectly straight ahead, which it is. All right. And I want to make sure that all my accessories are off. They are. Every single accessory is off, including my stereo, my GPS system, my heated seats, my defroster, and my air conditioner, and the emergency brake is applied. Once all that's completed, I can go perform the test. But before I do that, let's talk about why you do this. If you ever replace the throttle body, or if I've got a rough idle or my ignition timing is not correct. So to perform the test, I'm going to go to special tests. And I'm going to scroll down to other tests. I'll tap on other tests. I'll tap on idle air learn. And up will come a set of instructions. It tells me once again to make sure the steering wheel straight ahead, that I'm in park, that I've got the engine up at operating temperature, and that the engine's running at idle. So I know all that's completed. I'll hit continue. And in a moment, I'll start the test by tapping on the start button. It's now executing the test. If everything is completed properly, if I've got everything turned off and all my load accessories, electrical load is very much important to make sure that's all turned off, my test will be performed properly. Now that the test is completed successfully, let's go ahead and move on to our next car. But before I do that, just let's review a couple things here. One, always re re read your repair information available to you at Identifix Direct Hit. That way you'll know all the prerequisites of doing this test and what has to be set up. Like in this case, I had to make sure the battery voltage was at 12.9 and the engine operating temperature was at least 200 degrees Fahrenheit to 210 degrees Fahrenheit and that the steering wheel was straight ahead. And the most important thing was to make sure all my electrical load 
were turned off, such as heated seats, the rear defroster, air conditioning, the actual stereo and GPS system, and the emergency brake was applied. Once you know you got all that done, the test will perform successfully for you every time. So let's go to our next vehicle. Hello, my name's Jim Newkirk, and I'm an Audi Volkswagen specialist here at Identifix. And today, we're gonna to be demonstrating using the Genesis Touch on a 2006 Volkswagen Passat. And what we're gonna be talking about is basic settings. Now, you may not be familiar with basic setting procedures on Audi and Volkswagen vehicles. Let me just give you a brief description of what we're talking about and why it's important, and then we'll get into actually demonstrating a few procedures here. Now, basic settings is a way to return various systems and components on a Volkswagen or an Audi vehicle back to their originally, original factory specifications. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important because as you're servicing a Volkswagen or an Audi, you may have to do something to uh, uh, perform a, a service where you'll need to disconnect the battery or you'll need to disconnect specific components, all right? If you disconnect the battery on a Volkswagen, many systems can lose their basic settings. Now, when basic settings are lost, what will happen is you can get performance issues on the Volkswagen. For instance, if a battery is replaced, you can lose the throttle body and transmission basic settings. When that happens, what you will find is drivability will be drastically affected from what the customer is used to feeling. You'll have a situation where you can have very poor acceleration, hesitation, you can have a start-stall condition occur. Any of these types of situations can occur just from a simple battery replacement. To cure that, we go in and we provide the ability with the Genesis Touch to perform a basic setting to correct that issue. Same thing with, with the climate control system. If we've had to, to disconnect the climate control system to service something underneath the dash, something along those lines, once again, now you can get into a situation where the climate control system will no longer provide good heat or good air conditioning. It will go to a neutral position. So it will never get cold, it will never get hot, it'll just be just kind of lukewarm at all times. So once again, we'll need to basic set that system to restore full functionality. Transmission, also can lose basic settings. Now in this particular Passat, the 2006 Passat, this transmission does not actually require a basic reset, but many do, so it's important to have that capability. If the transmission loses its basic settings, you'll have shifting issues. It can hang in gear much longer, so you'll get extended shifts and hard shifts. It can go into a real hard downshift situation. All of these things will, once again, change the drivability parameters that the customer is used to driving. So it is something that's important to be able to reset. Something as, as simple as, as headlights on the Passats and on the Audi A4s and A6s, in many cases we have headlights that uh, are automatic aiming as the vehicle uh, angles change. All right? Those require basic settings as well. So there's many things that require basic setting. Now, with the Genesis Touch, the nice thing about this tool is we have the ability to go ahead through the Identifix connection through the Genesis Touch to actually pull up any information we need to perform basic settings. We just have to tell the tool what basic setting that we want to perform and then it'll pull up information that tells you how to perform that basic setting and, and what you need to do. So it's an extremely, extremely powerful tool. Now, the specific basic setting that we're going to be talking about today, I'm going to de demonstrate obviously how to get to the information, but we're going to be talking about electronic parking brake. And this is a critical, critical path ability that the Genesis provides to perform electronic parking brake service. You must perform a basic setting to retract the electronic parking brake, then to re-extend the electronic parking brake after pads or rotors have been serviced, and then finally to run a full functional test on the electronic parking brake to make sure that everything's working properly. Now, why is this important? Well, if you do an electronic parking brake incorrectly and fail to perform the retract, the re-extend, and the functional tests in order, in the proper manner, you can actually end up destroying the electronic parking brake control module. You can end up inadvertently erasing the coding in the electronic parking brake control module and the ABS control module simultaneously. You can end up damaging the calipers, caliper pistons, and extend mechanism. So it can get real expensive extremely quickly if this procedure is not performed correctly. And the Genesis gives us the ability to do this.
All right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to start off by I'm just going to show you how easy it is using the Genesis Touch with, with Identifix to get at the information you're going to need to perform these basic settings. It's very quick, it's very, very simple, and you've got the information right at the car, right at your fingertips. So let's take a quick look here. On the Genesis Touch, to access Identif Identifix information, what I want to do here is I want to tap on Diagnostic Information. And here's the Diagnostic Information Select screen. And if you go all the way over here, there is the Identifix link. And all I have to do is tap on that link. And now the Genesis tool is going to go ahead and handshake via the internet with the Identifix website. And now we'll be able to access the information we require to perform this, this uh, series of basic settings. I've pre-entered the vehicle information here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the Genesis scan tool to access the Identifix website and to actually pull up information on performing a basic setting. And just to show you how easy it is to get the information you're going to need to perform the various basic settings that are required to service these vehicles. So I'm going to go ahead here and enter my vehicle. And now what you're seeing is the actual information screen where I can access the information that I need. And to access information, all I have to do is go to this red box right here, and I'm going to enter right in this area, throttle basic setting. That's all I need to do. And once I search, it's actually going to pull up the information required. And we can go ahead and, and read that out and perform the basic setting we need to do. So let's go ahead and enter throttle basic setting. As you can see, I've entered throttle basic settings. And now all I have to do is hit the search button. And the system is going to go out and it's going to search the entire Identifix website for information pertaining to throttle body basic setting. So we're going to go ahead and collect all the information we need and pull it right up so we can go ahead and look at the procedures to perform this basic setting. OK, now what we see is we pulled up the information. If I go ahead and I, and I scroll down, you can see we've pulled up a tremendous amount of information regarding basic setting. But we're going to go right here to this top procedure. And all I have to do is touch that procedure. And it's going to open up that particular bit of information. And this talks about the importance of providing the capability of doing a basic setting and how you actually perform that basic setting for throttle. So now, as you can see, this covers an awful lot of Volkswagens and, and Audis as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and once again scroll down. And there's my procedure that I need right at my fingertips. This tells us the, the, uh, the way to actually approach the, the, the basic setting. It tells us what we need to do in terms of getting into basic settings, what we need to enter as the correct code to perform the basic setting, and what we expect to see. So the information is right there at your fingertips. Now, this basic setting that we're looking at is a very, very simple basic setting. Throttle basic settings are, are one of the most common things you're going to do. Now, as we move into actually going through the electronic parking brake service procedure, you'll see how much more complex that is and why it's important to have this capability. Like I say, this is a system that can be damaged if things are done out of order or incorrectly. So having this information at the car, at your fingertips via the Genesis Touch, is absolutely critical and it's priceless. OK, I think we've demonstrated how easy it is to access basic setting information with the Genesis Touch right at the car using the Identifix uh, connection. So what we're going to do now is we're going to concentrate on electronic parking brake, that being a significantly more difficult and more involved procedure. So once again, to access the information I need to perform electronic parking brake procedures to prep the car for replacing rear pads or replacing rear calipers or replacing rear rotors, what I'm going to do is simply back out on the tool. So I'll scroll up to the top here, and I'm going to go ahead and back out. And now we're back at the search screen. All I have to do is enter electronic parking brake and perform a search exactly the same way that I did before. And what we'll have is the information we need to service this electronic parking brake. So let's go ahead and enter the information. So I've gone ahead and entered electronic parking brake and performed the search. So now we're at the page where we can actually go ahead and look at the information we're going to need to perform a brake service and an electronic parking brake service on this vehicle. So all I have to do is, once again, I'm going to use the information right here. 
And I tap on that, and in just a moment here, it's going to open up the information that I'm going to be using to perform the parking brake service. As you can see now, we've opened that up. Once again, we show the model years and, and vehicles that this applies to. And I can go ahead and begin to scroll down. And this is going to walk us step by step through the entire procedure. Okay? And it's simply a matter of entering the correct value blocks in parking brake. And then we're going to retract the calipers. After we've retracted the calipers, we're going to close the calipers back up again. And then finally, we're going to perform a functional test to validate that everything is functioning the way that it should be. Now, once again, it's important you follow these directions step by step in the exact order. Once again, this is a complex system, and if things are done out of order, you can actually end up doing damage to the system or causing an unrecoverable situation to occur. So as long as you've got the information available to you right here, you should never have a problem with doing something wrong. You just do it step by step. A couple of warnings is one thing that, that uh, people forget is you always want to perform each one of these steps with the calipers bolted up on the rear wheels. You don't want to have the calipers taken apart, unbolted, or anything like that. So what we're going to do is you can have the car up in the air, you can have the wheels off, but the calipers need to be, remain bolted up. We're going to go ahead and energize the parking brake to prep the system, and then we'll perform the retract procedure. All right? Once we've retracted the calipers, you can go ahead and turn the vehicle off, which is a good idea. And now what you're going to do is you're going to perform your brake job, replace pads, surface rotors, replace rotors, whatever needs to be done. Once we've completed that, we make sure that everything is completely bolted back up again, except for the wheels, and then we're going to perform the close procedure. What that does is that closes up the calipers, and that allows the calipers to actually see the amperage spike when the pads come in contact with the rotor and actually provide enough clamping force to act as a parking brake. That step is critical because that calibrates the system. All right? Once we've calibrated the system, then we perform the functional test, which is going to open and close the calipers three times, and that is actually going to go ahead and, and seal that information into the system. It's going to know where its open position is. It's going to know where its closed position is, so you don't get any kind of brake drag or anything of that nature. That completes the whole procedure, three steps. Open the calipers, perform what work you need to do, get everything bolted back together, close the calipers, and then go ahead and run the functional test. Now, the other thing that you have to be aware of here is you must not do any inputs on the scan tool while you're performing any one of those three steps. And it's, it, it's easy to tell that the steps are actually in process because you'll hear the calipers move. Uh, when, when I start to activate these various steps, we're going to hear the calipers move. Right? You always want to wait at least 30 seconds after you stop hearing caliper motion before you move on to a, an additional step. And as long as you follow these simple rules, it's very, very easy to perform this. So what we're going to do is we're going to get set up to perform the procedure here, and then I'll walk you through the procedure step by step. Now that we have our information in hand, we're going to go ahead and close the browser and get to the actual performance of our tests.